to the Union Fitness Podcast. Uh, today in studio, we have the one and only, the man who is on the skins and the dumbbells, mm-hmm. oh. Ethan. So-called Welcome. the fastest double pedal in Pittsburgh. Oh, I don't Can, know, I don't have know you about ever, that. Have but... you ever curled and double bass pedaled at the same time? No, actually, I haven't. Let's do that after this. Okay. Yeah. This sounds up. awesome. I, yeah, actually, after my next client, I'm going to go play my drums. I'm going to get my practice in for today. Okay. So well, <laughs> I'll, I'll steal some dumbbells from here, <laughs> and I'll, I'll go work on that. Perfect. Uh, so no Ham, uh, no Curtis, no Jared. Everybody just quit. He gone. They gone. And that's why I'm here. And that's why you're here, but <laughs> yeah. that's okay. Old we're, reliable. We're happy you're here. The longest staffed member on Union Fitness. Hey, are you? Ethan. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. I don't even know how long. Yeah, Close longer to- than any. I think I think I'm second, but he has me by a few. Wow. Yeah. How's that feel? I mean, you have seen it all. I feel old. You Literally feel old. Seen it all. <laughs> I feel ancient. The comings and the goings. Yeah. You've seen it all. Well, where when did Kate come in? She used to be pretty close to you, right? No, man. No. She probably has a few, a few months. Okay. Six, seven. I don't know. All right. All right. Cool. I forget. You lose track. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, today, what we're going to talk about is um, you you live a very awesome. I don't want to say a double life, but essentially a double life as a touring musician and a coach, a, a little bit personal yeah. fitness coach. So we're going to talk a little bit about the things that make uh, that unique and and talk about some things that are up your alley, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, awesome. So let's uh, – do you want to say something now? Something now. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's just – you know, CJ kind of brainstormed all these, but let's just kick it off. You wrote a blog um, a couple of months ago about music and training. Yeah. And just kind of like recap that for us, and then we'll have like a bit of a general discussion yeah. on it. I have two – PR songs right now, but we'll talk about them we after. Two. I think two. Yeah, I well, think PR they don't songs really fit, and they don't really fit, but I want to hear what well, you have to say. Well, there's also a really famous PR song in Here? this gym. Here? Yeah, yeah, so like that, that's all kind of cool to to get rolling. Wait, what is that? I don't even know that one. Firewoman is the one here. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. For, Casey put that in. For a whole prep, I think every, every top set for anybody, me, Curtis, Casey, Joe John was Firewoman. Well, I'm weak and washed up, so I don't really set PRs anymore. Yeah. So that's why I'd, I'd never heard it. <laughs> you never, they never played it for you. They no. never heard it once. I get that. I get that. I get that. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about your blog. I know I wrote that blog a while back because I wanted to contribute something and I don't sure. really know what to write about. I feel like everything's been written about. So I tried to think of something a little more original and, uh, and I tried to, the, you know, do a good job. Went, found actual real articles, real research. Oh, wow. On he this cited stuff. his sources, too. Cited That's sources. impressive, Look actually. in there. They're at the bottom. I, you know, I don't want to, like, you know, I'm not just trying to make stuff up and, you know, or just say, oh, you see people do this, so that must be the case. Like, no, nah, I actually looked up real studies to That's see awesome. what was truly going on yeah. with what music's effect is on training. And I think some of it's kind of intuitive. You know, music gets you pumped up, gets you excited. You're a little more alert, you're stimulated, and you're probably going to perform a little better with lifts. So I think that's kind of like, you know, well known, but you kind of look into it a little more and, you know, I'm not going to spend all day talking on this, but I think some of the interesting things I found was that music has an impact on your exercising in very short term, like bursts. So eight, 10 seconds around there, it has like more of an impact. They found like a correlation between you know, music getting hyping up someone and better output. But when you get into little longer sets and things like that, when you're working around like the 60 second range, I don't know if you get those people doing like the bodybuilding sessions of lots of reps, they found like at that point, it really didn't make much of a difference whether people were listening to music, if it was, you know, loud, soft, if it was music they selected, any music didn't really have much of an effect. Dude, and- that's perfect for powerlifters because we, uh, we go up to the thing all the time, put like a right. seven minute song on for a quick five second of work right yeah so it's 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 kind of interesting how like you know what what does music really have an impact in exercising well not really more like specific events and in, in moments rather than not like the whole workout and stuff yeah. you know i think a lot of times that there's when you go into more things like distance running and stuff like that there is an element of you know diverting your attention from being tired or sore and things like that but right. you don't really you don't really get that with it seems like that 60 to 90 seconds of work range so i think that that's why you know a lot of cardio classes you just get blasted i mean they have all the lights going and things mm-hmm. like that just take your mind off like what you're doing zone out but that doesn't really work when you're doing things like max like a max back squat deadlifting and stuff like that we have to be a little more like dialed in and, and like tuned in where you can't really just forget what the hell you're doing 
so I feel like it's it's interesting how it all yeah. all works out. But you know, uh, the other thing about the cardio that I found was interesting is that a lot of it depends on the tempo of the music. Where if sure. things that are really high tempo, upbeat, and things, you know, people start kind of um, getting that like cadence to those tempos and stuff. So if you're really working on a long cardio session, some distant stuff, and things like that, if you pick the wrong music, <laughs> you're gassing you're out. Gas. You're gonna gas yourself. So that's why I run to the Grateful Dead. Here's you're not some, gassing out to yeah, that. Here's so, some no practical chance. evidence. When when my dad was teaching me how to drive, he'd always make me turn the radio down because he noticed when the songs were jamming and they were going fast. Little old sixteen year old CJ was driving really fast and when the car when the song was slow, he was driving slow. So So you weren't like putting on cannibal corpse and getting real yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah, we get on the highway like, and hit it. Yeah, so yeah. you were listening to night moves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice and slow and easy. A little, a little Kenny G or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like chill. Mike, some Michael Bolton. Mm -hmm. And, then and it's I mean nice and smooth. To to go back to your like six to eight se eight seconds of like pump up energy, I only hear the music, even though I have it in my ears, I only hear the music before i squat like yeah. when i get in the bar and like unrack and walk back i don't i'm not listening to the music oh, really you know what i mean like i could probably hear it in my mind but i'm really just hearing my mental cues like all right sit sit mm -hmm. sit open boom like yeah. i don't even hear it and then i rack it i'm like oh uh typo negatives on you know, yeah. and i think that goes into the whole thing about like you know being in the zone and that's like a whole nother thing that where like you know you don't pay attention to anything else other than the task at hand but i think that's pretty normal that you know you, you focus on something and everything else just kind of shuts off and it becomes automatic if you're actually know what the hell you're doing. Right. So, I think that is the key. I don't know what the hell I'm doing 90% of the time. I, so I'm definitely listening to the song as I'm doing my squat or whatever it is. I'm just good at faking it. That's all. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. He's got the smooth looks to fake it. There is definitely one of my favorite stories to tell from when I worked uh, for Penn State Hockey is uh, the leading goal scorer on the team's name was Andrew Sturtz. And we were down by two to Minnesota in the third period. And they've been playing kickstart my heart pretty much every oh, fucking yeah. commercial break. And Sturz, he's sitting on the bench and he's going like his feet are going. And I had him mic'd up and you can just hear his feet going on the thing. And he just turns to the guy next to him and he goes, they better stop playing kickstart my heart or I'm a fucking score a goal. <laughs> sure enough. He hit it. <laughs> Coach called, it. called his line. Bang. Back in the net. His arms are in the air. He's against the glass. He's like, I told him. I told him stop playing it. We came back to win that game. They play the wackest music. Oh, at, the like, worst. At, like most. It's just the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. yeah it's like, actually, the Pens used to play cool music. Yeah, they did. Like, I feel like it's kind of changed over the years. I'd go to games. They'd play like some Slayer, but not mm -hmm. like that, like Rain and Blood. They'd play some like, you know, more deep cuts, like Expendable Youth and stuff like that, which was which was kind of sick if you yeah. the game, hear some cool stuff like that. But sort of now it's like the warm-up music. It's always like some... So, they sold out. I warm. know the radio DJ that you believe is sick. Or the, the in-house oh, DJ. Well, see, that makes sense. Because sometimes yeah. they play some stuff, but I'm like, yo, this is like... Yeah. This person's into some other stuff they right now. They threw in some yeah. bad religion the last time I was there. I was right. like, who plays bad religion yeah, at, some a, bad at religion. a sporting event? Uh, Ray Zapparoni. Uh, who was one of my teachers at Robert Morris? There you go. Was the was the longtime in house DJ, and then um, they went with a more family friendly DJ. Oh, yeah. always so, selling out to the kids. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. But like when we were going getting cheap tickets for Student Rush and stuff, yeah, yeah. that was all Ray. Yeah, nice. Yeah, just, just pumping in the Rise Against to get it's you go. Interesting. <laughs> the the tunes they play like football. Football is more like pop rap. Yeah, country. Baseball, I feel like all country. Hockey, I feel like it's for the like crusty punk heads. Uh, hockey's a lot of country, right? A really, a lot of country. Yeah, Last time I went, it wasn't that much. I feel like you go up into like, you know, oh, fuck. not at games. Oh. I'm sorry, yeah, not at no, games. No, yeah, I'm talking about games. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, not at games. The no. Athletes. Yeah. yeah, I always thought it was kind of wild in basketball games. They play the music while they're taking. Wow. Yeah. 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 But How do you like, communicate? You get like 10 seconds of music and then they, they shut it off once they get in the zone and start setting stuff up. Yep. Which is always kind of weird. It, oh, it fucks with me every time I watch. Every time I watch, I hear the music and it takes me out of the game yeah. immediately. But you know what is sick is the uh, pep bands at college. Yes. Like, you get some of those schools like, uh, I think, I'm trying to think, George Mason, some schools like that. They have like super cool pep bands. Oh, right, and right, Especially right. when you get like the tournaments going, they bring both bands. They kind of battle the whole oh, time. Sometimes yeah. that's like better than the uh, better than the actual basketball game sometimes. Oh, no. I mean, there's definitely, you know, uh, so college baseball. Mm -hmm. The World Series is for college baseball is happening. The band is half of it. 
Oh, I didn't even know they brought the band. No the idea band, the, the band plays the walk-up songs. No oh, way. That's cool. It's so fucking cool. It's so fucking cool. So, like, you hear, like, Seven Nation Army from a marching band as, like, your fucking home run hitter comes up. It's over the fence every fucking time. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. I it's really that, cool. I didn't know they did that for college baseball. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. C- CJ, you got some PR songs you want to talk about, right? Dude, right now. That was smooth. Yeah. That was. You've never done this before. He's a professional. Wow. You're, you're hosted now. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's oh, on oh. you. He's a professional. <laughs> Run the ship, baby. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Part of the crew, part of the ship. Dude, I have some weird ones right now. Two two very weird ones. Skyline's not happy about either of them. Because <laughs> they get stuck in her head and she doesn't want them. Uh, right now, one of them is Typo Negative's I Don't Want to Be. Yeah, great song. You know, And strangely enough, the other one is, I think it's XTC uh, Making Plans for Nigel. It's a weird 80s song. Okay. Well, I don't even know what that is. But it's perfect for me. I don't know why. My go-to mm-hmm. song of all time, though, is Blood and Thunder by Mastodon. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember you talking about stretch. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Making Plans for Nigel. See, it's a very strange... Uh, Just catchy earworm. It puts yeah, me in my place. We're listening to it now. This is... Oh, I get this, though. Yeah. It just settles me down, and I kind of focus. And yeah. I, it's very, you know, trancy, because they just say the same words all the time. I mean, you can get hyped up in lots of different ways. Yeah, okay. I get this. See? But Nigel... Yeah. 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 And great accents. I'm yeah. just... You know what? I like this song so much, I'm going to heart it. Yeah, I just hard it on my playlist. That's how I found it. I yeah. was going through my likes. But it's weird the differences that'll make you like pumped up. Yeah, well, for sure. I've been on a big I was strangely mm-hmm. I don't work out in headphones. But these right. last few weeks I've been like headphones stuck. Interesting. Because not too many people bother you when you have headphones on. True. Great point. And you don't pick up you don't pick up other convos that like, oh, I need to like chime in on or something, which I'm very communal when it comes to training, so I'm here for it. But also at the same time, like, no one's training the same as me right now. So if I put my headphones in, I'll take my two-hour time where I mess around and condense it to, like, hour 15, hour 30, no doubt. Well, our uh, friend and former uh, guest on the podcast, Jesse Thiessen, famous for those big white headphones. Famous. The big fuck-off headphones. Yeah, the Absolutely. don't talk to me, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. You can see me, just don't speak. Right, and that's, like, at the end of your workout, go up and say hi. But, I mean, she, like... She comes into the gym with them on, and she leaves with them on. Yep. That's yeah, it's yep. like in sometimes and out. That you don't even know if, if you wave, wave at her. You know, All right? So, I, I always work, wave though. at her just to annoy her. I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. care. <laughs> She's here to work, right? Um, so let me run this by you, music workout expert Ethan. And I know that's now your title. You're stuck with it. Cool. Uh, I listen to podcasts when I work out. Am I a sociopath, or is that just me? My girlfriend listens to like NPR Whoa. and stuff sometimes. I believe when she that. Lists, so. Because sometimes it's like, if you don't want maybe something to distract you too much, sometimes it's just nice to have like noise, clutter, or yeah. background noise, you know, like almost something like that's just that's just there, um, and just kind of in the background to fill space. So I don't think that's unusual. Now I guess that's all. If you find something too interesting, then before yeah. you know it, you're not doing anything. You're just sitting there. You're listening. just sitting in a gaze. Yeah. <laughs> just- oh no, that's never. I can't. I can't sit. I have like that. Like have to go motor. I like I have that, to be doing something. Yeah, but I think listen to podcasts. I think I'm sure lots of people do that. I, I mean, some of my some of the people I work with, like I'll try to you know do stuff for online. I was like I know yo, I know cardio is boring to do, but just put on a podcast. Oh and yeah, go cardio for sure. And if stuff you're like, like slow that. low cardio. No yeah, doubt. it's 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 like a good time because then you, you just you don't have to pay attention to like anything or even almost what you're doing. You can just kind of yeah you know, actually pay attention to what you're listening to. The, we, the other thing I found with cardio is if you try to do it to music, like we were talking about earlier, you set your cadence to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like my, so like, instead of focusing on my breathing when I'm running, I'm like, like my, my breath is going to the rhythm of the music and then mm-hmm. that's not going to fucking help us mm-hmm. get anywhere. I mean, even like you know, driving a car is the same thing too. You just like have a, a, a buddy of mine, this is like a long time ago from Baltimore, got, got pulled over, really? you know, speeding and stuff like that. A cop comes up and this, this kid was kind of a shithead and you know, he was probably like 20 something at the time. Cops like you were speeding and blah blah blah. He's like, dude, I was listening to Biohazard, man. What do you expect? <laughs> and just, like, the the cop was not think happy about that. Yeah. But... Oh man, would, if Hammer was the cop, he'd been like, all right, carry on. Respect, <laughs> please. Change, change the music, please. Get out of here, kid. That's hilarious. Um, 
what's your current PR workout like kind of music selection? I don't know. I remember in, in that blog, I think I put down like a Mad Ball song. I think like Fuck yeah. Live and Die, I think was like the certified hard ass song, like guaranteed to make you stronger. Uh, recently, I don't know what I've been listening to recently. I've just been kind of, whatever's been, I haven't been listening to, you know, anything because I'll just go to the gym and whatever's on is on. Mm-hmm. So I don't really have like a current like PR song or music I've been listening to while lifting because it's just been whatever's going on at the gym at the time. We are spoiled here. People can go yeah. up all the, and whenever they want to and put on their PR song, Spoiled City. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to kind of revoke some people's Spoil- oh, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Privilege a little bit with that. There's some mm-hmm. garbage that gets Especially the young the young bloods need to earn some stripes before we can kind of let them loose. Mm-hmm. I got they gotta earn a stripe. We'll we we'll gotta we we'll have an Ethan Josh Siege deadlift bench squat competition with the young kids. If they win, they win. I all mean, right. Am I competing against the girls? You can compete against I, that's the only boys, I girls, shot at. men, need, women, cats, and dogs. Okay. I need to compete against the children. Yeah. The children. For, for me to win. Like, for that one. Zig. I do think uh, it is cool, though, and there's definitely been times when I've walked into the, the back and been like, uh, like Curtis is going with the pit kids, and I'm just like yelling at him, like, the vibe is not right. Like, these kids aren't, they're not, and I like I think it has a lot to do with the music. Like, if the if the if it's like, you know, some kind of like, weird pop song and not everybody's into it and you see like one person falls off so then somebody else is like oh they're not lifting too hard today oh you know what maybe i'll take that extra five off (laughs) you know like you see it fall apart a lot yeah i mean hammer makes fun of it all the time but the big booty mixes kills it every fucking time he hates it because it's like musical add and I, i agree but however when you're coaching it kind of keeps everything high tempo like if you just put a shuffle on and let it go. Once some some you know slow song pops up and someone's about to hit their top set, it's like eh, the the room just goes. It shouldn't. Yeah. It shouldn't. Chatham men's hockey loved the booty mix stuff. Loved it. And then yeah. one time I hit him with like some wild Russian hard bass and it was like way too much for him. Yeah. It was like too. It was too techno. Like, Whoa, this is strange. Too techno this for is too him strange and, stuff. and foreign. Yeah. Yeah. Hockey guys, it needs to to be easily consumable. Yeah. yeah. For a hockey guy, for sure. Um. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, what we were going to talk about. What we were going to talk about yeah. was Ethan in the sweaty van touring across the country, I finding uh, Fat Bob's gyms to train <laughs> at. It was more. That was more of the glory days. It's been a while since I'd had any of those big long tours. But I, I was like telling you guys earlier, it's like funny, like because when I first started touring, and I can't imagine what people did through the '90s and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, I didn't, I, especially because my bands. We were just we were like the last people to get iPhones and everything, mm. and I so we would you know it was it was weird back then. I think actually when I first started touring, I you know I was real ambitious. I think the first U.S. tour I did, I had like my little bag of bands, and I was like oh, I'm gonna get my band workouts in, and I was Heck the only yeah. one in, in my band that lifted. So I was like I was gonna get my band workouts in. I remember I was all excited, and I think like the first three days I did it, and I'd be doing some stuff like setting up the guitar cabinets and doing dips on them, and I was all motivated. That fell off real quick. Yeah. It, it was hard to keep that going yeah, motivated time. by myself and everything like that. But, you know, we didn't have iPhones. So, like, finding gyms was just, it's just trickier. I guess you'd have to do your research ahead of time and, you know, find everything. So now it's easy, though, with Instagram. I mean, it's so easy to find gyms and stuff now. And then as I continued to tour and everything, you know, get iPhones and all that stuff, it just became a lot easier to find all that stuff and organize things. What about when you were out of the country? Usually out of the country, like, I was too busy. We were like too excited to be places, mm-hmm. sure, and everything like that. I didn't really. There was a, um, there's a a gym in Berlin called I think it was Berlin Strength. It is like a cool, cool gym, and it's right down the, uh, right down the street, and it's like big kind of like art area where there's a couple venues like a skate park and stuff, and there was a venue called like Cassiopeia, I think, that we'd always play, and we would go lift there because it was a cool spot. They'd play like hardcore bands and stuff Whoa. there, so we'd always go lift there before a show. And other than that, like, I don't think we ever went to a lot of gyms. Sometimes if I was over there earlier, I'd go with, like, some friends and stuff. It wouldn't really be, like, on tour, like, trying to find gyms in Europe. Um, When we – I did a tour through Australia, and that was a cool tour because we would play – we'd play in, like, Sydney, and we'd do do one show in Sydney. We'd do one maybe, like, outside the city a little bit, and we might have, like, a day or two off before we went to the next area. So I remember – on that tour, like we'd have some time to chill and we'd go like, you know, work out at a gym or something like that. But, you know, that was, you know, people knew we'd maybe want to hit the gym up. They'd be like, hey, I got something set up for you and stuff. And and eventually with, you know, 
with any of the bands that I played and it kind of got to that where people like knew you were coming through, you might want to lift, you meet more people, you know, from other bands, you go through their city. I mean, even like the, uh, wow, my one buddy's band harm's way came through and played Pittsburgh and like they hit me up and I was like, you can come, come lift a union here before you your need show. to stop for like 30 fucking seconds. Did you just say my buddy's band harm's way? Yeah. He's going to lose it. Hold on. You're fucking kidding me. You, you missed, you missed it when they came in here lifted. We'll give him a call next time, bub. Ethan's got all the hookups, man. He knows. Hey, just yeah, just playing shows. It's like it's like ham and like strength coaches. Yeah, you know? it's like Ethan you, knows. No, the band. that's different. That's different because he's a god. Oh, oh. So <laughs> make sure you take that. Out. <laughs> he's a god. He's like he's like he's like the one that got like sent off of Zeus's lap or something. Yeah, with the shoes that flutter down or something. It's the best. <laughs> Like literally, I, I the name is escaping me. James. Oh, James, thank yeah. you. Like literally got into the band because of the way he looks. Like I was like, who's this guy? He, Holy is shit. He that, is he that jacked up dude? Yeah. James was all, he was always big. Even I remember the first I mean Harm's Way, they've been a band forever. I can't yeah, remember long time. I can't remember the first time that uh one of my bands played with them. I have no clue because they'd been around for, for so long. Yeah. So it's probably like God, at this point, like 10, 12 years ago when we started crossing paths and stuff like that. But some of my other bands, we, we you know, toured with them, we always play shows with them here and there and stuff like that. So that's got to be a hell of a workout partner. <laughs> we, yeah, <laughs> actually, the um, so I'm trying to think 2009, I think it was my band Steel Nation. We did a U.S. tour with Death Before Dishonor and their guitar player, Frankie, is a large man. Yeah, he knows how to lift weights. And I yeah, remember yeah, a couple yeah. times we'd like go out to a gym and I'd be like, we're deadlifting. And I'd be like done. He'd be like, I'm almost on my on my warm up oh, set. But I'd be like, I was like, I don't even know what oh, to do right man. now. Like, I'm gonna go over here yeah. and like mind my business with like these other weights. Like, you can keep deadlifting. Keep I can't keep up with up. you. Oh. He's probably the strongest person from a band that I've ever lifted with. Have you ever lifted with a guitar player from Every Time I Die? Have not. Okay, because uh, he's a big guy too. Yeah, he's a wrestler now, but yeah, I, I'm. Um, and still guitar player for 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 the dub AEW. Whoa, oh, the rival. Yeah, the rival. Not your not your squad. Not my squad. Not your squad. I'll accept any squad, but yeah, it is an interesting because like the wrestlers for NXT lift here when they come through. Yeah, and it's really it is interesting thinking about trying to find gyms on the road. I know like going on vacation and doing stuff with Anastasia when she was in mid meat prep. And try, you know, we couldn't miss days. So, like, we're trying to find gyms on the road. And, like, her coaches would be, like, making calls. Like, hey, can my client come train here? Like, that kind of stuff. And, like, even just when you are doing powerlifting or something mm -hmm. specific, like uh, Olympic lifting, y you know, uh, LA Fitness probably doesn't have what you need. Right. Oh, great. I mean, when, when usually when we're out on tour, we just, like, just do random stuff. I mean, it didn't really care. Like, no one's, like, you know, well, actually, one of the times uh, my band... Uh, bitter end we were out a, a buddy of mine tom was filling in on base and he was like prepping for a bodybuilding show oh, there was no. like there was like having a couple i don't even know it was like days after he got back so he would like he had like a real st strict like workout thing so i mean it's just bodybuilding so easy to kind of do about wherever but right. he's probably the only person that's ever been prepping for something uh, maybe maybe one of the tours that i think james was prepping for maybe a powerlifting meet or something one time um, that he was like trying to get his his lifts in and stuff like that. But normally when you're out, you just go do something just to kind of like just feel good. Yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah. get all the something. pizza and the leftover booze out of you. Right, right, right. Fascinating. Uh, what's the coolest gym you found on the road? Mm, let's see. I'm trying to think if we ever found anything cool. Like a lot of times when I was touring more. It was, you know, it, we just would usually try to find like golds and just real simple stuff like that that was easy. Um, there had been a couple gyms that, uh, there was a, a gym in Austin called Hyde Park that I'd lifted at before. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm pretty sure it's still around and stuff down there, but it was, a cool, it was a cool spot. I mean, it was like everything. You had like bodybuilders there. You had powerlifters, Olympic weightlifters, super cool spot. Yeah. Like that was one gym that like, if I were ever out, like I always try to go hit up that spot. Sure. That Berlin strength place over in Berlin sick like super cool spot there um but I maybe maybe Hyde Park cuz that was okay. one place that like we'd always be out and other than that we just find like random things sure like, random gyms sure, and sure, stuff. sure 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 all right Ethan well if you had to to build your your gym squad oh out of band members oh that's a good question oh, i like what, this what bands and who would be your gym like training squad 
Oh man, you know oh. you got to pick your poisons here. I mean, the the my dudes in Steel Nation, like I'm the only one that like lifts and that. So like you know, if we go out. I wouldn't really ever. But they'd hype I, you up. Uh, they didn't hype me up. They'd be like, <laughs> they'd be like chilling, doing something else. They'd be like talking about like Steelers football and like yeah. sports and stuff, doing their thing. Russell Burger. Uh, I think I, I got. I think I got to be loyal to like my band Bitter End. Uh, just like those dudes. Okay. It, it was funny because like originally when I started playing for that band, um, I knew I knew the singer Daniel because the very first tour I ever did, he filled in on vocals for the for a band from Texas. And Bitter End was based out of Texas, so we we met like way back then. And I remember we kind of like stayed in touch or whatever. And the, at the time, their drummer couldn't do a lot of tours. And I remember he hit me up and was like, "Hey, we got this like you know big tour coming up," and it was. This band have hearts last tour across Canada and West Coast. He's like, I remember that. Band. He's like, we need a drummer. Like, do you want to do it? And so I was just like, oh, these shows will be awesome. Like, I was always a big fan of Bitter End before, so I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And I really feel like at some point in time, I don't know if it was that tour or later on down the road, uh, he admitted he's like, well, the only reason why I asked Ethan to play drums in Bitter End was because he liked to lift weights and would play shirtless. And I thought he looked cool behind the drum. <laughs> and I think that was like how that, and then I, I even remember like the guitar player, Shane, who's in the band now was like a similar thing where he was like, I think even for a bit, Dane was like, if you didn't lift weights and like, I don't want you. Yeah. I don't want you like filling in for the band and stuff like that. Cause my buddy Shane, like same thing, like yeah. you know, lift weights. So I think it almost had to say like, you know, the, the, the bitter end plus uh, our old bass player, Andrew, who moved to New Zealand, I think bring him back. And that would be, that would be the squad. That your squad. Yeah. That's the squad. Not like to mess that. with. Not to mess with. The guys in Code Orange get after it. I've lifted with them before. He knows them too. They're they're all they're all business, even with their band. That's right. how that's how like what do they, they train? Roll. What do they train? We they they lifters or power lifting. Yeah. And then well they do jujitsu as their main, but like most of the movements they're doing is power lifting. A lot of deadlifts, a lot of bench, a lot of squat. Right on. Yeah. Strong. Do you, do you have a lot of time to like train if you want to? Like when you're on the road and stuff, it or just it, I think it just, just depends. depends. What you want. Yeah, it depends on like how far your drives are, what you're doing, and stuff like that. I mean, it gets to the point like, yeah, I, even for bands that I mean, I haven't really done long tours in quite some time, but you know, you play so many cities over and over and over again. Like you get to them, you get kind of bored. Like you get tired of seeing certain things. Like especially when you go play, uh, I feel like I'm talking trash on cities and stuff like that. But you end up in like St. Louis or something, right? And you're just like, eh, I don't know. I saw the Archers already. Yeah, and then, seen it. And then you go find gyms and you have more time. But like, yeah, I think the first tours, yeah, I did. I wanted to see like everything and be like a tourist and and everything like that. But then now it's like, you know, if we go places and you know, sometimes we're old now, so we'll get like hotels instead of sleeping on people's floors and just go work out at the hotel gym or something and right and that kind of stuff. The, Should, guy, uh, the guys in Four Years Strong watch movies, I guess, all the time. Like, they go to the theater, and they try to watch the same movie city after city after city oh until they can't no. take it anymore. Oh, my God. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> That's about two times. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah move, movies are a, big, are a big one for sure. Like, yeah. I, got, I got some other friends that I have. My, one of my buddies worked the uh, for Newfound Glory, and he came in. And they, like, they were, like, staying in Monroeville. Like, they had their bus yeah. parked out in Monroeville. And he's like, hey, you want to come hang out? I was, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll come, come hang out with my, my buddy Anthony and it's like, what are you guys doing? I was like, oh, we're gonna go see a movie. And I was just like, oh, okay, I'll go see a movie. And you can see like, it anywhere you want. I was like, Yo, what movie are we going to? I went to the theater out in Monroeville, and it was the Power Rangers movie. Fuck like, yeah! And I was like, Yo, this movie was bad. Yeah. Not that I really had too high of expectations, but I was just like, like the new one in twenty whenever. Yeah, twenty whatever. It was terrible, but oh. I was like, well, you know. So yeah, some people go work out. Some people watch movies. Go see Power Rangers. So go see Power Rangers. Some of us go to see Newfound Glory, which I have tickets to already. Whoa. Oh, wait, um, there you go. Yeah. There. Sh should we should we try to guess some of our uh favorite Union Fitnessers PR songs? Okay. I don't know. This is going to be all you cuz I don't think I I can even start the Well, you can you what? can have Ham. Guess Ham's try to guess Oh yeah, ham. guess oh, Ham. Just pick Ham. He's I don't know. It, it probably changes weekly with him. So I'm like, depends on like what fat Joe Lewis or whatever is chum bone shorty. He has <laughs> shorty. I can't remember. He was on that one, like British rock band for a little while. He oh, was super yeah. stoked on. I can't remember their name though. Yeah. So I don't know. When's the last time ham hit a PR? <laughs> I did. That's, that's just, well, I you mean, gotta loop, you gotta loop Josh's quote back to that quote and just play it on a circle. I mean, I have Oh man. I, mean, I hit a PR a little while back, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, mine fly under the radar, though. I don't make a big. I just kind of like just yeah. do it because I know that there's some person that like curled the my right. PR deadlift. Some pit, so right. some, pit, right. some pit kids warming up with it. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna keep this one real quiet and just go go about my day. Fair <laughs> so. enough. Okay. Well, what's your PR song, Boop? 
Mine? Yeah. Uh, poof. So if we uh, load that bar up right now, yeah. If we, uh, it's it's Castle of Glass, Lincoln Park. Whoa. Uh, which is not like an intense song. It's kind of you know, uh, kind of like a, a a a Zen song in a lot of ways. But like, it's just very like rhythmic. Allows me to like focus on the breathing, and then like the chorus, it doesn't swell. It just kind of drives. A little bit faster so like and i'm just like fucking in that's it he sold in that's it so i think what we've learned today is that not all pr songs have to be some crazy no songs. oh for sure i think that's a great great lesson yeah. from today if anything sometimes when they're too crazy you probably overstimulate oh for sure and like blow it just just blow a gasket and fall yeah, over yeah sh- dead well, done you know and then if you spend all that energy getting yourself that worked up, like we've talked about with smelling salts before, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't know what the fuck you're doing with a smelling salt and you hit it for the first time and then you go lift, sometimes you're just like, yeah, my brain can't even focus on what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Fuck this thing. Yeah, I want no part in smelling salts. There's no, there's no business for me. I like a little tootski here and there of them. <laughs> I like a little toots, yeah. Well, that's it's interesting. So you said eight to nine seconds is how long a song can impact you. That's what this study seems to have found, where it has like a significant impact. Wonder what smelling salt says. Can't be much longer. Probably similar. Yeah. It's probably even shorter, to be honest. Probably. I was thinking. It's probably just like a slap in the face. Right. Well, slap in the face, you sore at least after. Right. Yeah. You get a little nose burn. Yeah. Interesting. So there you go. Stop fucking smelling salts and stabbing yourself on this podcast, Curtis. Don't stop. And, uh, you know, go fucking listen to a tune. Get worked up. Preferably Steel Nation. Shameless pl- plug. Shameless okay. plug. Yeah. That's or my bitter band. ends. Or either either one. Get them Spotify plays up so we make no money. Yeah. No <laughs> money. We just have your Spotify on loop in the gym. Are you going back on tour soon? Uh, I'm, hopefully we're going to start playing some shows and stuff with everything kind of being a little more normal. If some tours happen, maybe next summer or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll kind of see what happens. We don't really like actively seek them out as much anymore because... Yeah, both my bands, everyone lives all over the place. So it's like a little harder. Everyone's got families, mm. some kids, like real jobs and stuff. So it's not That's like lame. it's not like when lame. we were younger and you know, when I first moved to Pittsburgh, I slept in the dining room. Nice. For like seventy bucks a month. Fuck so, yeah. you know, we're not really in that stage anymore. So things are a little little different. And plus we usually we never really make money on tour. We might you know, it's kinda like the whole the whole goal is to like not lose money and just go have fun. Okay. Seems fair. Yeah. So should we have a, a, a gig at Union? Your I inaugurational so. I, gig? I, I told Todd that like we would, you know, I'd get Steel Nation to come play like one of the power yeah. meets in between like the you know, deadlift. Switching out. Yeah, yeah. Dude, to do something like that. Like we, I'd do that sometimes. Well, dude, Hammer's gone now, so I'm the captain. And I say let's do it. Well, and I'm you're oldest done. in line. Now you know? well, I'm I'm the captain to you're the Friday. captain. I say on you're fri- captain to f- on Friday. I tomorrow, think I'm the captain. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Yeah, you're senior. Oh. You're senior commander. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shit. So I think it's time to shine, dude. Awesome. There's gonna be some drastic changes around here. Yeah. Are there? Yeah. yeah absolutely. All right. Well, that's good because this podcast comes out after you've already made your drastic changes. Oh, <laughs> no one can stop us. Yeah. So congratulations. Nobody will know except for us. Yeah. <laughs> the changes are happening. All right. Anything else you want to talk about today? I don't know. I almost kind of feel like from talking about like weightlifting and like my music stuff, I got to give a shout out to my buddy, Polly Edge. Okay. He was like the wildest dude that, uh, not the wildest dude that I met, but it was just super, super funny. Cause he was in a, he was in a band meltdown that I drummed a couple tours with and like a tour in the U S and in Europe and things. But it was funny. Cause like he was just a super like high energy, like in your face kind of guy. And I remember like the first time I met him, was up in like Brockton and he had like a, a zine that he'd made about like hardcore and weightlifting or something. That's sick. And I remember Whoa. he just like came up to me and was just like, yo, dude, you look like you like lifting weights. Yo, check out my zine. And I think he like sold me a zine. He could sell like, he could sell anything to anyone. He was just a total, just talk circles around you before you knew it, you'd have like, you know, whatever he was selling you right. and stuff like that. So, and I remember, um, and then it was funny cause I did this tour with him. And it was yeah, even like the, how the tour even got brought up was one day, you know, he, he would, they played in Philadelphia and one day, he, you know, the show was over, he was leaving and he didn't, I didn't see him the whole day really. And he came with me. He's like, yo, good to see you, bro. I was like, yo, well, you're going to drum for my band one day. Huh. And then I got a phone call and he's just like, Hey, you want to drum in my band? And, um, 
but like it's funny because we were on this tour and we we're talking about like old bands we'd been in and stuff and he was like someone brought up in the band like yo paul you were in some band called like you lose or something that was terrible and i started like thinking in my head and i was like oh my god it's like you sold me your demo in oh. new york city like even before the zine thing happened where you were just like i had i don't even know i had like a marauder shirt on he's like yo marauder sick band check out my demo and before i knew it i was like giving him money he was giving <laughs> me a bad demo and stuff like that but he was like one of the og dudes i feel like that i'd ever met that was into like you know music and weightlifting it's it's interesting that they don't cross more because there's very there's a lot of tides to it 90 percent of the people that do this shit don't make money off of it mm. oh yeah with that kind of stuff yeah right mm. you just gotta fucking love it and you're sleeping on fucking six deep in a fucking airbnb to get to this uh you know meet in vegas for nationals and yeah it's i mean it's like it's it's like pretty similar in those kind of things it's a small world you're like one degree of separation from like, just like anyone right so it left me a lot of similarities and I definitely think now, like, weightlifting seems to be a lot cooler in music and stuff. Like, I don't know, like, I hate sounding like that old guy and stuff now, but I don't really feel like I knew as many people who were into, like, weight training when I first was, like, getting in, like, music and going out and touring in, like, the, like, early 2000s. But now it seems like, you know, maybe because it's, like, Instagram and all that stuff. For everyone sure. posting stuff and, like, I'm weight training and all these kind of things like that. And I don't know, maybe it just, it just feels that way now because everyone kind of showed that they did it. And back then, like, you didn't really know because you couldn't really check up on people and all. But I felt like, you know, when I first started doing it, it was a little more small, like, close-knit community than it is now where sort of like back then you just go lift with whoever because there weren't as many. But now it's sort of like, I don't know, maybe a little more clicky, a little bit. Well, I don't know. Yeah, and all the TikTokers are all swole and lift and shit all the time too. So that only does good things for gyms, but also, you know, exacerbates. I guess we need TikToks and get Ethan and you to dance, huh? I don't I don't really know TikTok. Me neither. It's okay. It's I don't know if I'm I don't think I'm missing out, but yeah. how much do you how much are you on your phone already a day do you think? Uh yeah, probably like more than I want to be. More then for sure. don't download so, TikTok. Sometimes like, cuz I feel like I'm always like kind of like texting with my clients and some of the people I train like remotely just to like make sure things are like squared away and good and that kind of stuff. So yeah. I gotta stop doing that. Yeah, but don't get into it. I'll be fine unless there's like cute cat videos, yeah, or something like that. There's and there's cute cat videos like, and cute girl videos <laughs> and uh, all sorts of like dumb hilarious shit. Like, yeah, it's it's it is. It, if you remember Vine at all, it sounds just like Pandora's box. It so really becomes I'll, that. I'll stay oblivious. And yeah, like yeah. Don't open. Back it. Into Do my not bubble. open the book. Right. Literally. 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 Um, okay, cool. Well, give me one piece of advice, uh, to somebody lifting right now that's listening to this or their, our, our demographic sits at their desk when they are working and want to be lifting. So give, give them some encouragement, get them ready for their lift today. It's got, you got plan, plan your playlist out ahead of time. Maybe, you know, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. like, you know, get your, get your songs set up and be like, all right, these are my songs that are kind of like getting me ready and stuff. These are the warm up songs and stuff. And then, you know, in the playlist later, later on, I'm like, all right, this is where I'm hitting my, like my top set or something like that. So maybe, I mean, let's face it. Like people, we, me and CJ were talking about this earlier. You people work like desk nine to five jobs. They're not working all yeah. eight hours of the day. They're sitting around yeah. on TikTok, God knows what. So it's like, yeah, plan out, you know, plan out a little playlist for the day. Maybe get something to you know, get a little more motivated for. Love that. Not hating, just saying. Just yeah. saying. You know? Plan out, <laughs> plan out your workout playlist for the day. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, Ethan, thank you so much for coming in. For sure. And talking music and weightlifting. Uh, Siege, anything? Uh, stay groovy, dudes. Do we have anything coming up? Yeah, we do. Uh, what's July 9th? Is the Out Athletics Boot Camp. What day okay. is it? Okay, so that'll be the weekend. You're hearing that. It's yeah. this weekend. This weekend coming up, July 9th. Out Athletic. It's Friday. Uh, yoga, boot camp, comedy show. You got to get tickets online. What's but that? Friday, 6 p.m. Here. Here at Union. Got it. Got to get tickets. But if you don't want it, just show up anyway. We'll make it happen. Donate. It's for a great cause. Uh, we're pumped. Awesome. Cool. All right. That's been the Union Fitness Podcast. Oh, and don't forget, nominate us for uh, City Papers, Pittsburgh Best of Gyms, July 9th. That's the last day to vote. Vote every day. Vote and then come lift with us. Hoist. And donate. Love it. Awesome. This has been the podcast. Yep.